Good morning, Richard. Great to have you with us today. So the big question is, is it true? And more importantly, why do you think it's true that as little as 7% of real estate agents sell 93% of homes? Yeah, isn't that in incredible? We know about the Pareto law, which says that 20% will do 80%, 20% of your activities will give you 80% of your results. And if you go into any business, whether it's salespeople, whether it's a car dealership, insurance or real estate, you'll see that 20% of the salespeople do 80% of the business. Now, that's a general number. When we actually look at the specific number is in real estate, the last time I saw, it was 7% in my market, 7% of the agents sell 93% of the homes. You know what that really means? It means that 93% of the agents running around with business cards are sharing 7% of the business. So there's something wrong, obviously, in those numbers. And uh, when people enter the business, they don't intend to say, I'll be in one of those categories of the 93%. Everybody wants to do well. We can assume that whatever that means for them. So what's the problem? Obviously, we can make a whole list, but one of the ones I want to highlight today is exposure. They're exposed to different ideas. So it's not always the person's fault. It's not always the realtor's fault. It really isn't. Because if you've been taught that people should call you, you shouldn't call them, and blah, 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 and all these other things, and you got to spend money to make money, you gotta, and you got to be the brand in the area. Even though you got no money, you got to borrow money to put up billboards on your credit card, you know, and all the other stuff that people teach, then uh, it's not your fault. Because you're looking, when you come into business, you're looking for guidance. So there's a lot of guidance that is absolute rubbish in our business. People are teaching rubbish. For whatever reason, maybe they never knew themselves. And in that particular case, that's why they became a manager, which in our business, funnily enough, is a demotion. If you're a top producer, who would want to be a manager when you can make 10 times more being a salesperson or literally five times more in the field if you're good? So the problem in an industry is the training is incorrect. The person sitting in the office learning the wrong training I went to a training once in an office by a well-meaning good person. And he said, the topic today is what gifts to give to your client when they buy a home. And I thought, wait a minute. What if somebody hasn't even got a client? I'm already going out there spending an hour training or half an hour on gifts. There's something wrong in the industry. The first thing is I have to get a client. So I'm very fortunate because my first broker who I'll always be grateful for, said he was a, like a soprano type, of, you know, Italian. You know, first thing he said is, get on the phone, get on that phone, Richard. I go, okay, I just followed his advice. So he didn't tell me too much what to say with the scripts. I had to learn that after. But he told me the fundamental, I got a prospect. My job is to go out and find people. And I was on the phone. So I was very fortunate and uh, maybe lucky that I got into the right groove in the right training i still remember you know looking at the board of the office and there was all these names on it of who got listings that month and i began to notice it's always the same two or three agents that got all the listings in that office it was disproportionate and i, I actually remember visualizing myself i had to look at the board and see my name on it as you visualized it before i even knew about these techniques I really did, just like in a movie. I'd look at it and I'd see my name up there. And I started to watch what they did and they were prospecting. And that's how the weather were getting. They were knocking on doors, calling people. They're on the phones. And in fact, what I did is I asked my broker, uh, can I have an office near that particular person? And it was an ugly office. If I had to share the office with somebody else, there's a sliding window. I'm on one side and behind me is somebody else. Even when they gave me a promotion, I started to 
I should do quite well on this property. And they said, we will give you an office upstairs with a window. I said, no, can you my priorities? I want to watch this person. And I stayed in that office and I modeled success. So the question is, who are you modeling? Are you modeling somebody that, that actually sells a lot of homes? How many listings did that person take this week, this month? Are you modeling someone who's on a salary because they couldn't sell houses? And they're reading you out page 61 of Think and Grow Rich and feeling really proud of themselves reading it, that they've got an audience because otherwise they'd have none. And you got to face the truth and say, well, who's selling homes? But it's your choice. The good thing is that there are people available to teach you how to sell real estate. There are people out there, good people, not just myself. There's also other good people out there that are very good at teaching you how to sell real estate. So now after, let's say, a month or two, now it becomes the real estate agent's responsibility to say, I've got to go find the right exposure. It's my fault. But a lot of people don't. The first loyalty is to yourself, your customers, your business, and you're going to make that decision. And whatever that means, whether it means I got to join a team, I got to change office, I got to work with this person, I got to change my coach, whatever it is, there's, in our business, there's no mercy. When you go to the ATM machine, it wants a deposit, it has no mercy. 